In addition to all of the inherent benefits of cloud computing with Windows Azure, one of the other things you can do quite easily is to set up a test or development environment for basically your developers to use, but it doesn't have to be just for that. You can set up virtual machines, you can set up storage, you can set up uh, databases, of course, that can come and go in the Windows Azure platform. So all kinds of testing can be done, but specifically for developers, what they often need to do is develop applications locally and then migrate them off to the cloud. So we'll have a quick look at just some fundamentals of setting that up. So I'm going to first go into our Windows Azure portal here and just quickly have a look at what we have here. So obviously we know that we can set up websites, virtual machines, cloud services, databases, uh, but storage is one of the main things, of course, that needs to be accessed. So again, the idea is you've got developers that need to be able to access cloud-based storage, but while they're developing the applications, they want to be able to do it locally. So what we can do is switch over into our Visual Studio and again, we've got our Windows Azure component right here, so we can right click on this and just choose to connect. And we'll sign in with our credentials. And if you haven't done so already, then one of the first things that you want to do actually is make sure that you've installed the SDK, the Software Development Kit, and you can access that actually just by clicking on the Windows Azure link. It will take you to the website where you can install the SDK. Uh, and once that has been installed, if you go to your Tools menu, uh, in fact, you'll see there's the option to connect to Windows Azure there as well, uh, where you can also go and grab the SDK. But this indicates that it has been installed. Uh, plus, you'll also want to keep current. So you'll notice that there is extensions and updates here under our Tools menu. So we can just click on that. And right there under updates, in fact, it is notifying us that we do have some updates available. Uh, so you want to make sure that you install those and keep those current. That's not critical for this demonstration, but that's where you'll find them. And you see there's other options here for the Visual Studio Gallery and samples. So good idea to keep, keep your environment up to date. But that idea of developing an application to be able to access cloud-based storage without actually having to do so comes down to what's known as the storage emulator. So here's storage right there. And if I were to expand this, you might just quickly see it here. It's going to pop up down here really fast, probably. But if I expand this right there, initializing the storage emulator, okay, we should see a balloon pop up over here in a minute as well. But this is the type, there we go. Windows Azure emulator has been started. So blobs, queues, and tables, these are the types of storage accounts that you can create back in our portal. But these aren't in the cloud. These are actually local to your own system, but it emulates the same type of storage to be able to connect to something that, in fact, is actually on this local system, but simulates offline storage. So, for example, if I were to just click on tables here, I can right click and choose to create a table. I can right click any one of them, in fact, and choose to create this, uh, either a binary large object, a queue for holding messages between applications, or any kind of tabular storage. But if I go down to my notification here, there you see is the Windows Azure link, and that's running automatically since we logged into our Azure service. And the storage emulator is started. And if I right click on that, I can choose to show the storage emulator user interface. And it just shows me that I've got those three types of storage accounts available. But notice the address. It's accessing it via HTTP, but it's a local 127.0.0.1 address. So this allows you to test your applications against that local storage. And then when the application is completed, then your code can simply be updated to refer to the actual IP address where that storage account lives in Windows Azure. So gives you a great option, again, for your developers to be able to test those apps, make sure that they are accessing the appropriate storage, and then quickly and easily migrate them off to the cloud-based storage.